Hey, serious investors. Want to know how to profit from microcap stocks? Well, welcome to WideWorldOfStocks.com. Want to find out about the next undervalued company that doesn't get the exposure they deserve because of their size? Well, go to WideWorldOfStocks.com and sign up for your free membership right now. Want to inject your portfolio with superb growth potential? Wide World of Stocks will discover the next huge mover that's only being held back by their inability to gain visibility on Wall Street. WideWorldOfStocks.com. It's all about undiscovered talent. Information is knowledge. Knowledge is power. Every day at WideWorldOfStocks.com. And welcome back to the wide world of stocks. And as promised, we are excited to have what may be one of the most significant and ambitious biotech opportunities that has ever crossed our path. Viral Genetics Inc. is a drug discovery company researching new treatments and methods of detection for HIV, AIDS, Lyme disease, staph and strep, cancer, and certain other autoimmune and infectious diseases. Their management team reads like the dream team, and their advisors include two Nobel laureates, Dr. Luc Montagnier and Dr. Barouch Blumberg, leading researchers, business and intellectual property veterans, and drug development experts. We are pleased to welcome Hike Kalasian, president and CEO of Virogenetics, symbol V-R-A-L. And Hike, welcome back. What a difference 15 months makes. When you were interviewed in 2009, your goals were to strengthen your balance sheet, approach the FDA, and to solidify your science to validate your claims. I want to talk about all that and the progress you've made, but I want to ask you, in 2009, what other major achievements were there by the company? Our biggest accomplishment in 2009 is the in increase in our portfolio. We've licensed from University of Colorado intellectual properties that were invented by Dr. Karen Newell in the area of metabolic cancer treatment, in the areas of increasing biofuel production, and this makes us much stronger. At the end of the day, our assets is our intellectual property. And to, to double it, to make it triple it, that makes us stronger. Indirectly, it contributes to strengthening our balance sheet. It also gives us great business opportunities without hurting us financially. Hike, I've read you've entered into some rather impressive partnerships with some of the most important institutions in our country uh, designed to help you further your research. Let's talk about the importance of partnering. What exactly does partnering to further your research mean? Well, you have to remember, we're a small company. We, we don't have... The, the scientist that works on delivery systems or a scientist that works on uh, the area of vaccines or, or different ways of looking at the, uh, uh, a certain disease. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do as a small company is to partner with the best. Uh, what is our weakness is being small is also our strength. It gives us a chance to work the best of the best. Sure. To have an opportunity to work with, for example, Dr. John Sheehan. If I was a big company, I probably would have our own scientists do it internally. But to have his input in, in some of the science that Dr. Newell has invented is a great opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. So that's our goal, is to partner with the best, to try to get the best science in front of the FDA so we could start injecting people here in the United States. Tell me about the joint collaboration between the University of Colorado and Texas A&M. Well, originally Dr. Newell was uh, employed at University of Colorado, and she, was, she had inventions there, and we've licensed all that. We're, we're, gonna be, we're doing the same thing with Texas A&M as well. Um, the doctors from Scott and White are all part of the Texas A&M relationship that they have internally. Mm -hmm. What's important about that is that we want to do, uh, uh, there are drugs out there that are safe. We know it's safe because it's already been in humans. And some of the metabolic technology that we licensed last year allows us to get into humans quicker through what's called a physician's IND. Exactly what is a physician's IND? Well, a physician's IND is basically the compassionate use a, a, a treatment. If a physician feels that a drug is safe and there's enough data to support it, they ask the FDA permission to inject people that they, they don't have too many choices left, uh, which is different than a regular IND. A regular IND is we have to go through the process of satisfying the FDA's requirements as it relates to safety, toxicity, production quality, and so on and so on. And, and that is something we, we, we are doing with the peptides. That is something we're going to be doing with the metabolic. I mean, that is our ultimate goal is to get into a regular IND program. But at the same time, if we have an opportunity to save lives, and that is the reasons we are in this business, mm -hmm. then that we will do that as much as we could. Back in the uh, latter part of May, I read that uh, Dr. Blumberg, which is a second Nobel Prize winner, to join your advisory board, came aboard. And what can you tell of the relationship about that? How, how does that all work? Sure. The, uh, the, the doctor was... Uh, discover of the hepatitis B virus. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he discovered a, a vaccine as well as a marker to, to detect it. Um, this is real proud for the company. I mean, we're, we're in the business of trying to treat autoimmune diseases. And if you look at the last 30 years, you got hepatitis being a major problem. You got HIV being a major problem. We got 
two gentlemen on our board that have discovered those viruses. I mean, to have somebody at that character to mm -hmm. recognize the potential significance of your science sure. is a very, very proud moment for us. Uh, also, I read that uh, Dr. Robin Shattuck, who I understand is funded in part by the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, has agreed to investigate your HIV AIDS drug uh, compound. What can you tell us about how, how this London team came about? We're, we're always looking for confirmation of our science. We're always looking for somebody else to look at it and come back and say, you know, you're right, this is what it does. It's this is what it could do, and so on and so on. So it took us a long time to get an agreement together with him, as well as the institute he was involved with, which he will be looking at the, our, our peptide technology mm -hmm. to, to see, to, to reconfirm what we've done, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then to look at it to see if there's any other uses of it, whether there may be uses in, in the area of vaccination, different delivery systems. He's a very well-known scientist, and, and it's an honor to be working with somebody like him. So I would guess with this uh, multi-approach towards a variety of uh, treatments that can be provided, uh, there should be uh, opportunities to work with a variety of different pharmaceutical companies that may have an interest. You know, one major pharmaceutical may be interested in cancer, another major pharmaceutical may be specializing in HIV, and this gives us different potential revenue opportunities, and I would imagine we should multiply the valuation by similar benchmarks. Well, absolutely, Roland. In terms of valuation, when we had a single HIV drug, we were valued somewhere from 20 to $80 million at different times based on where our research was. Mm -hmm. Today, we have multiple drugs, so in the short term, we're not getting the valuation we deserve. So our multiple strength and our multiple valuation we will get towards the end of it will be much higher than it is today. So if we were a single biotech company that worked, biotech company that worked in HIV, we would have a greater value or equal to where we are today. And then if we had a separate Lyme company may have that value, if we had a simple biotech company may have that value. But the fact that they're all under one umbrella, we're not seeing the benefit of it. But at, the, at least not currently. Not currently. But when you start licensing these products, mm -hmm. you're going to see the multiplier effect very highly. At least that is my personal financial uh, scenario that I see for this company. So 2010 has been a great year uh, in terms of accomplishments, partnerships, agreements, launches of a clinical trial. What do you forecast for the next 12 months out? Well, our goals are, uh, again, it's pretty aggressive, but simply in 2011, we want to be treating people that need our help. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our number one goal. Number, number two goal is we have a world-class advisory board. We want to have a world-class infrastructure. We want to bring managers in people to help us out internally within the company structure that are the best of the best to, to, to get this company to where it really belongs, to be a blue chip company. Mm -hmm. Well, Hike, from everybody here at Why Will the Stocks, thanks very much for appearing on the show again. We'll be following the progress of Virogenetics in the next 12 months. For more information on Virogenetics, you can go to virogenetics.com to look at company filings and do your own research at virogenetics.com.